So, Darius, uh, you'd been in here before as an opposing coach, but as a head coach, did it feel any <laughs> different being in here? Or the game at, started, it got going. As a head coach, it feels different to be everywhere. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's uh, it's a learning experience. It's a lot different, um, obviously, from being an assistant. So, yeah, it was it, it was totally different. Um, and, you know, I was here last year, but it was during the COVID, and there was like a thousand people in here. So, it's different when you have all these people in here and you're going against the Mountaineers. Darius, I was kind of wondering this, and you might be the perfect guy to ask, but as a player, the pregame ceremonies of running out on the carpet, the musket going off and all that, I mean, that's great for, for players. Right. When you're the opposing coach and the lights are off and the musket's going off, and what is it like trying to instruct your players during that time? I mean, uh, the, I mean we – one of my assistants, uh, James Heron, was a was a manager here, so he had the scout. And the big thing we told him is, you got to be prepared for the musket because I remember when I was uh, when I was a player, you know, he's playing some of the teams, uh, and you know, you see them at the end of the game going through handshake line, hitting the ground. And you know, I, I didn't want that to start our guys, so yeah. we we let them know ahead of time that they, you know, the Mountaineer was going to shoot the musket off. And I, I saw the Mountaineer standing over there, and I asked him, I said, "Can you scoot over a little bit?" But he didn't, he didn't scoot over. But um, yeah, we we definitely talked about that, and um, you know, that's the biggest thing that you have to prepare for pregame. Yeah. So, what'd you think of the Mountaineer team? Give me the the scout from the other side. Yeah. I mean, when you play against one of Hugs' team, you already know what you have to prepare for before you even look at them. You gotta, you gotta be ready to to be physical on the on the defensive glass. You gotta be prepared to to take care of the ball. And when uh, when we found out McNeil wasn't playing, we knew that Taz was definitely gonna step it up, and that's what he did. He made tough shots, and I think um, I think with their team, you know, they have a lot of guys that that can drive you, kind of space you out, and. Yeah, that's that's what we were trying to prepare for, trying to trying to limit their opportunities and getting in the paint. But they did a really good job of getting to the paint. How did you guys react to it? Mm, not very well. <laughs> not very well. We uh, we 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 did a, and we've been plagued by turnovers throughout the year. Um, and our challenge is now is to just get different types of turnovers. And the, the turnovers that lead to what we call as touchdowns are the ones that 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 kill us and. You know, I think I think we had too many of those today. Darius, it seemed like you guys thought that you could dribble and score on them, and then maybe be visible with them on the glass. Something that you just pick up, or is something? I mean, about West Virginia, or is that something you guys intend to do every game? Um, you know, that's kind of how we play. That's kind of how we play. We, uh, you know, watching film, and I, I watched some film from last year against West Virginia, played Texas, and early on they struggled with kind of the step up ball screen, so we wanted to start doing that early in the game and. You know, they kind of figured it out, and, you know, then we started running some five-out open post stuff. And, um, I mean, we just knew they was going to be a, a great defensive team, and the biggest focus for us was, was getting getting over the press break of taking care of the ball when we get um, when we get over half court. Paris, when you spoke to the team, what did you tell Which team? I spoke to both teams. Yeah. <laughs> together, though, huh? No, 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 no. When no, you no. went into the, the other locker, into the, yeah. into the West Virginia locker. Right? I, I, I just told them, I said, look, I don't know what Hugs is going to come here and say. I said, he's probably disappointed. I said, I know him. I said, but you know what? Don't. It, the thing I learned about playing for Hugs, if you, if you, if you listen to the tone instead of listen to the message, you, you have no chance. And I said, this is a dude that helped me get to where I am changed my life I said so whatever he's telling you is probably is, is not probably is is the truth but the only way you're ever gonna get better is if you can accept the truth and you know I, I don't know that I think they appreciated me coming in there and I just felt I just felt that you know they might need to hear it from somebody else that went through it there's a Taz Sherman was saying that he got a chance to talk to you for a few minutes, I guess, at some function in the off season or yeah. something like that. Um, can you kind of, you know, give us, you know, from the opposing coach point of view, scouting him, looking at him, you know, yeah. get to know him a little bit like you have. What, what does West Virginia have in, in, in Taz? I mean, he's he, seeing him last year when I was at Florida to this year, yeah. the I think he spent the summer really working on his overall game. I think he's, 
you know, I think last year he's more catch and shoot. Now he's putting it on the floor a little more. And the biggest thing with him is you just got to stay disciplined when you guard him because he's really good with a shot fakes, pre-bounce and post-bounce. And that was that was a key going in. And, and for us, when we found out McNeil wasn't playing, we said we have to we have to guard him with the other guys. You know, sometimes, you know, Hugs putting guys in there that aren't shot makers. So I didn't think we did a good job of helping off of those guys enough. But, you know, back to Taz, I just he, – he's gotten so much better in a year. And you could tell he's a gym rat. You could tell he works because his his game is, is definitely improved from a year ago. There was service applause when you were, uh, you know, announced. There was a highlight video. I didn't Probably, see that. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, did you, did you appreciate any of that? Did you see the video I, at all? I, I had no idea. There, you know, the jumbo trying is so big now, you got to do it like this to look up. Like when I played, it was a light bright up there. So I didn't look at it. If one of y'all feel like sending it to me, I'll take a look at it. But um, I, I just, I heard the applause, but I didn't, I didn't know there was a video. So um, I, I'll definitely check that out. Any other questions? What does a what do Polycap do for them? He, he just, he's another physical body, and you know, and when you, when you scout them, they have a lot of bigs that that are very similar, and I think they just you know they just they're so physical they just wear you down. You know, one one goes out of the game, another one comes in, and it's like, you know, they all they're all very similar. So I, I think what he provides for them is just you know that extra physicality off the bench. Are his schemes any different than it was when your senior year? I mean, can you chart back and recognize the same stuff, or has he changed a lot? He's he's changed he's changed some some things. I, I could tell you know some of some of the sets. I I know where they're trying to get the ball. Um, I mean, obviously he's added some different stuff, and but you know for the majority of the. The, the part you you know what you you got to prepare for it's the same thing you know you got to be able to get easy catches physical on the glass but he's saying he's saying some things around